जय श्री कृष्ण चे कन्या श्री अद्वैताधार श्री वास घोर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण छे कन्या प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अच्वैता कदाधार श्री वास घोर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bakiri Paradadi Gopi Janabala Bakiri Paradadi Yashoda Nandana Prajachana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajachana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bhakiri Paradhari Gopi Janabala Bhakiri Paradhari Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bakiri Paradhari Gopi Janabala Bakiri Paradhari Yashoda Nandana Prajachana Ranjana 
ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜಾಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ಥಿರ ಭನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ಥಿರ ಭನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ 
कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रेमानंदे हरि बो नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पिस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवारी पश्चाचे सतारिणे ओम ज्ञान तिमरंद से ज्ञानंजना शलाका चक्षुर्मीलिता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित यूतले स्वयं रूप कदा ददाति स्वापदिक वंदेहां श्रीगुर श्रीयतापरकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णवश्चूप सखजा सहागना रघनाथ सजीव सावैत सवदूत परजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दीव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा नितम हे कृष्ण कर्ण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंठ राधा कंठ नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनीश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंचकौपातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतितनाम पवानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदे गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे after we're going so usually we speak on the past times of lord krishna but this evening we have been asked to speak about the past times of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhu pad the past times of the devotees is equally as powerful as hearing the past times of lord krishna because the devotees carry lord krishna the message of lord krishna everywhere with them so when we speak about the past times the activities of shri prabhupad it's just as purifying as hearing about the past times of lord krishna uh, when vidura returned home to hastinapur after visiting many holy places then maharaj yudhishthir glorified vidura by saying bhavad vidir bhagavata tirta bhuta swayam vibho tirti kurbanti tirtani swanta stena gadabrataha maharaj yudhishthir glorified vidura by saying that you are the personification of the holy places because you carry the lord in your hearts so wherever you go you make that a holy place and in a similar way shri prabhupad is like that 
because he's the pure devotee of Lord Krishna. So wherever he would go, he would carry the message of Krishna everywhere. Now Srila Prabhupada, of course, began his uh, spiritual life in the, well, he's, Prabhupada actually said, he said, my whole life I never forgot Krishna. From his childhood, he was born in the family of a devotee. And Prabhupada told us when he was a child, he used to see his father worshipping deities of Radha and Krishna. And whenever guests would come to their home, which was almost every day, because Srila Prabhupada liked to invite guests to come to their home. And Prabhupada told us that his father would always request the guests to bless his son, to bless our Srila Prabhupada, that may he become a devotee of Srimati Radharani, may he get the mercy of Radharani. So in this way you can see the fruitification of these blessings that Srila Prabhupada uh, grew up to be a devotee of Krishna, but not immediately. It was in the year 1922, so Srila Prabhupada was born in the year 1896, so 1922 he first met his spiritual master Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada describes he was very reluctant to go to here. But he, he had one Bengali friend who was telling him that come and see this sadhu. He's a, he's a genuine devotee. He's a genuine sadhu. Because, of course, even in those days, there were many people who were in the dress of sadhus who were sahajyas or who were not teaching properly, who were not giving really the message of Krishna but were polluting it and adultering it and who were not behaving properly. But his friend told our Srila Prabhupada that this is a genuine sadhu. So reluctantly he was taken there to meet. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And when they entered the room, then immediately Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada addressed the two Bengali young men entering and told them, you are very nice young men, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu around the world? So from the very first meeting with his spiritual master, he had been given this instruction that he should teach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, Srila Prabhupada told us how he argued with Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. He was arguing, saying that India is not a free country yet. At that time, India was still under the British rule. And he said, we have to get liberation for India first, and then we can spread the message of Lord Chaitanya. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati would not accept it. And he strongly argued with him, telling him that this message of Krishna consciousness as brought by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more important than any political adjustment. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. It has to be done immediately. You should take it up. So uh, Srila Prabhupada tells us how he was greatly impressed with the powerful preaching and strong speaking of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. And he said, from the first meeting, I accepted him as my spiritual teacher. However, at that time, our spiritual master, founder Acharya, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, was a householder. He, had a he was working or he had his business and he was not able to really take up that instruction which had been given to him. He thought, I have a young family, I can't 
just go away and leave everybody and preach the message of Lord Chaitanya. I have to take care of my responsibilities. And it happened that after some time, Prabhupada had relocated to Allahabad. Uh, Allahabad, yeah. Because his, his business, he had opened a business, Prayag Pharmacy. So it was at Prayag, at Allahabad. And uh, he was working there, having his business. And one day, coming to his office, were some members, some sadhus, who said they were from the Gaudiya Mat. And they explained how their spiritual master was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And they had heard from the people in Allahabad that Bhaktivedanta, at that time he was known as Abhay Charande, that he was a very pious man and he would certainly help them. They were opening a branch of the Gaudiya Mat in Allahabad and they were looking for people to help them. So they had come to Prabhupada's business there and they were requesting his support. So in this way, our spiritual founder Acharya, he went to the Gaudiya Mat and then he saw that, oh, it's the same sadhu I met in 1922. So 11 years were separating them. He first met in 1922, 1933 he met again. And after uh, coming after coming in contact again with the Gaudiya Mat, he became a regular participant. He would come every day to the programs and he uh, was recommended for initiation. So at the time of taking initiation from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, uh, uh, our founder Acharya, Abhay Charan, was, his name was Abhay Charan, he came forward to get initiation and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati remarked, Oh yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. He does not go away. You know, many people come and they have darshan and they go away. Some people come, they sit for five minutes and they go away. You know, they don't stay to hear very long. But uh, Srila Prabhupada, Abhay Charan, as he was known at the time, he liked to hear. He actually told us, he said, I didn't understand everything my spiritual master was saying in the beginning. It was very difficult for me to understand what he was talking about because the theology is very deep and there's a lot of terms, a lot of expressions which ordinary people are not familiar with. But he said, I did not go away. I stayed and I kept hearing. So in this way, he was accepted for initiation and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati gave him the name, he changed his name from Abhay Charan, he gave him the name Abhay Charanaravinda Das. Abhay Charan, the fearless feet, but Abhay Charanaravinda, the fearless lotus feet and Abhay Charanaravinda Das. So he was initiated. And at that time also, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada told Abhay Charanaravinda Prabhu that you should study Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, that this is a very important book. And he said, this is actually the handbook for the devotees. So when Srila Prabhupada, later on when Srila Prabhupada went to the Western world and began the Krishna Consciousness Movement in the very early years, in 1968-69, he published his uh, summary study of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which we call 
the nectar of devotion. So this was following the instructions of his spiritual master. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was initiated in 1933. It was his spiritual master's desire. He was very happy whenever books were published. He liked to see publications. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati actually was publishing a daily newspaper. You know, it, today if we were to think a daily newspaper, oh, we could not imagine how would we ever publish a daily newspaper on Krishna consciousness and go out and distribute it. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, you know, 80 years ago or so, was publishing a daily newspaper. And of course, he published many other books also, but he was publishing his daily newspaper. And people were surprised. They would often ask him that, how is it you're publishing a daily newspaper? But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati explained to them, he said that here in Calcutta, where they were all living, it was all taking place in Calcutta, he said, we have four daily newspapers. He said, their newspaper, these daily newspapers are having the news of Calcutta. And there are four papers coming out every day. He said, my paper is the news of the spiritual world. We could be publishing a newspaper every minute of the day. The problem is there are no customers. So in this way, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was explaining the importance of publishing and printing literature. And Sometimes people would bring articles and whenever they would see the art and whenever he would see the article, he would simply look and see how many times the name Krishna was there. And if the name Krishna was there everywhere, then he would say print it. That was the main thing, the propagation of the holy name Krishna. It should be there. So, so uh, from a, the very beginning of his spiritual life, uh, our spiritual master, founder Acharya, Abhay Charan, Avindam Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, was in, it was impressed on him by his spiritual master the importance of publishing and printing books. One time, Actually, Prabhupada, we said, was initiated in 1933. His spiritual master left the world in 1936. So he, he often said, I only got to associate with my spiritual master four or five or maybe six times. Not very much. He said, there were other people, other God brothers, they were always with my Guru Maharaj. He said, but I personally only got association a few times. But he said, I never forgot the instructions. And one of the instructions which he got, he received at Radha Kund. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had been given a building in Bara Bazaar in Calcutta. And it was a big building. It had been donated to the Godiamat for their center. But when they were given that building, he saw the devotees were arguing with each other that I will have this room, and this room will be my office, and this room will be for me. And they were each, you know, claiming what they wanted for their own comfort. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada said to our spiritual master, he said, better to sell the marble and print books. He said, there will be fire in this mud. 
Therefore, better we sell the marble and print books. He didn't want that the center should just be comfortable places for eating and sleeping. But the centers of Krishna consciousness are a base for the army to go out and fight Maya. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati impressed this on the mind of our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Bhaktisiddhanta, we said he, he left in 1936 and then after he departed, then Srila Prabhupada was thinking how to preach because he also wanted to he had, he had actually, before his spiritual master departed, he wrote a letter to his spiritual master. And he said to his spiritual master, he said, you have many sannyasi disciples who are serving you. But he said, I am a householder. I am in family life. He said, how, how can I help you? How can I serve you? So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wrote a letter back telling him that you are very fluent and conversant with English language and you know Sanskrit also. You use your knowledge of this English language to present this message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, this will be good for you and for those who hear you. So Srila Prabhupada took this instruction to heart after his spiritual master. This, he received this letter just a few weeks before his spiritual master departed from the world. So then Srila Prabhupada in the year it was 1944, he began to print his Back, Back to Godhead magazine. We have a monthly or bi-monthly magazine. It comes now in many different languages, in Hindi and Demo and Engl as well as English. English is published in America. It's also published here in India. And it, the Back to Godhead magazine was begun by Srila Prabhupada in India. In Calcutta, 1944, he would print. It was a very simple magazine. It was just like a sheet of newspaper. He would write some articles and he himself would arrange for the printing. And then he himself would arrange to distribute it. So Srila Prabhupada was... Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. So Srila Prabhupada would go out personally and try to distribute the magazines. Uh, in his older age, he, was, he had come to Delhi. He had retired from the world. His business was not doing well. And he was trying to preach at home. But his family were not interested. And one day even his, his scriptures went missing and he didn't know what had happened to them. So he decided that family life, home life was not so pleasing anymore because he had, the business had not done well. And so they were not so prosperous. So he took this as a sign from Krishna that he should leave home and go to Vrindavan. And he came to live in Vrindavan. And at the same time, he was continuing to do his writing and publishing. Sometimes he got some service in the Gaudiya Mat. Sometimes his god brothers would give him some engagement, editing some of their books. But mainly Prabhupada was trying to do his own preaching. He, was, he would print his newspaper and then he would go out and sell it. And he would walk in the streets of Delhi 
go into the tea shops and he would sit in the tea shop. The man in the tea shop remembers, he said, he would come and sit in my tea shop and he would never drink tea. He would just sit there and wait for the customers to come and when people would come in, he would approach them and sit with them and show them the newspaper and talk to them and request them to purchase a subscription or to help him in publishing. And in this way, Srila Prabhupada was trying to begin his preaching. He would request people, give me your son. I will make your son a preacher. He can preach the message of Bhagavad Gita all over the world. But the people would say, Oh Swamiji, I want my son to be a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. I don't want him to be a sadhu. I don't want my son just to be a sadhu. That's not what I want. So in this way Prabhupada was alone. He did not have any society. He was preaching. He had one disciple. There was one man actually became his disciple. His name was Acharya Prabhaka. Acharya Prabhaka, he was a very, very brilliant man, very learned. When he would speak, he could spontaneously compose poetry. He would speak verses of poetry. You know, just like, he was like um, Keshava Kashmiri or something, you know. In the Digvijay, he could speak so many verses spontaneously from his top of his mind it would come. So he was a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, but he was not able to help very much. And so then Prabhupada also began, in addition to writing his uh, newspaper, he began to publish Srimad Bhagavatam. And he published, he was, his, his plan was to do commentary on each verse with word-for-word -word translation, just like we have Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's a, a big task because Srimad Bhagavatam has like 18,000 verses. So to translate and comment on 18,000 verses, it's a very big task. But anyway, Prabhupada was very serious, very determined and he began, he somehow he got some money to print the first volume, he got some donations and then he also, he had approached uh, the lady who was the chair, the chairwoman of the Sindhya shipping company. The shipping company is no more now but Anyway, she was a very pious lady. Her name was Srimati Morariji and she was a devotee of Srinathji. She was from the Balaba Sampradaya. And Srila Prabhupada went there and met her and she had donated to him the cost of printing the other two volumes to complete the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So this way Srila Prabhupada had printed the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in three volumes. But it was printed in 19, early 1960s. Very laborious, letter press. Everything took a very long time to do it. And Prabhupada himself would do the editing and the type check the type, after they make the type, you have to check the type to make sure that there's no mistakes. But very laborious job and of course naturally there were many mistakes in the printing. Srila Prabhupada himself not only did all the editing and correction and everything, he also designed the cover for the book and he drew the picture. On the cover of the book there's an illustration showing the structure of the universe with the spiritual world and all the spiritual planets, Goloka in a lotus and all the Vaikuntha planets and then the material world in a dark portion in a corner of the spiritual sky. So this 
was all Srila Prabhupada's design. He drew this himself and he had it on the cover of the jacket of the Srimad Bhagavata. Then he had to distribute it because he had printed several hundred copies of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he would go to different government offices and he would try to get them to purchase some of the different libraries and so on, would purchase copies of the book. And then of course after some time then Srila Prabhupada uh, got the idea to go to the west and he was in Mathura one day in some Agarwal's shop when the man said he had he had a son living in America. So Prabhupada immediately picked him on, your son is in America, ask him to sponsor me, I want to go there. And the man said, okay, yeah, we'll see, let's see. And so he had forgot, Prabhupada had forgotten about it and it was some months later he met the man again and he said, my son has replied and he is sponsoring you to go to America. And so he, he's arranged, you know, he will be your, uh, he will be your sponsor to come there so you can get the visa. So then Prabhupada began to make his arrangements to go to the west. And of course very difficult at that time, he didn't have money but he had a sponsor anyway, somebody in America. How to get the fare to go there? He went again to see Srimati Morariji from the Sindhya Shipping Company to request her please give me a free passage on your ship. You have cargo ships going to America, you give me a free passage. And she was saying, oh Swamiji, you are too old to go there. He was already nearly 70. So she was saying to him that, you will die there, better just stay here, why to go there? But Prabhupada was very determined and he Im impressed upon her his desire to go there to the west and he convinced her and he was able to get the passage on the ship. The ship which Prabhupada went on was called Jala Dutta and there was a captain on the ship, his name was Captain Pandey and when they arrived in New York Prabhupada sold the captain a set of his Srimad Bhagavatam because he had brought with him books. He had arranged for his books to be bought, put in cartons and put on board the boat and he brought them with him to America. And even before he got off the boat, he distributed one set of books to the captain and the captain paid him twenty dollars which Prabhupada said just, that was just a few hours spending money in America. And he didn't have any money to come to America, he came with 30 rupees. So he came there in America with nothing but he had great determination and he had also the blessings of Lord Krishna. Empowered by Krishna he could come and tried to begin to preach Krishna consciousness. So he arrived, the ship came first in Boston and then went down to, he went down to New York and then from New York the Mr. Agarwal who had sponsored him arranged for someone to meet him there and they put him on the bus to go to the town where this Mr. Agarwal was living. The son of the Agarwal in Mathura was living there in America, he had married an American woman. His wife's name was Sally, Sally Agarwal. And so she was a very nice lady and they had just had a child actually, they had a young son and uh, Prabhupada used to stay in their home 
and he used to cook for them and they would enjoy to eat the prasadam. They would, Prabhupada would, was living there in their home. He wouldn't let them cook. He would cook for them. And he would cook Indian food and the American lady would enjoy his cooking, very nice. And Prabhupada had even brought some cereal with him from India, <laughs> which he was cooking for everyone. So while Prabhupada was staying in their home, it was a small town in a place called Butler in Pennsylvania. So some distance south of New York, it's a small town and Prabhupada asked them, can you arrange some programs for me? I want to speak. So they arranged a program in the YMCA and Prabhupada went and gave a lecture and also offered that you can purchase my books if you are interested. And then even the local newspaper, they came and they interviewed Prabhupada and they took a picture of him and they called him the spiritual ambassador from India. Hmm. So in this way Prabhupada was beginning his preaching in a very small way. But he knew he had to go to a big city to actually achieve something. So he came to New York. And in New York somehow he had heard there was one man called Dr. Mishra. Dr. Mishra, a Bengali. And he had a yoga, he had begun some yoga uh, club, yoga society. So he went, Prabhupada somehow contacted him and this Dr. Mishra arranged some accommodation for Prabhupada in New York. Because this Dr. Mishra was teaching Hatha Yoga, so he was quite successful economically and he even had a few followers. So when he would have the, the students come for his yoga, Prabhupada would also go and Dr. Mishra would ask Swamiji to sing some songs. So Prabhupada would sing bhajan and then sing Hare Krishna mantra. And then sometimes also he would speak. But Dr. Mishra did not, he got a bit worried that when he heard Prabhupada speak that he may attract all his students away. So he did not encourage Prabhupada to speak too much, you see, because he knew Prabhupada was very powerful. So after some time, one, somebody said to Prabhupada that, you know, you're staying in the uptown side of New York, uptown. You know, there's the, the, the streets in New York, they're, they're numbered, you know. There's two, one, two, three, all the way up to 100 and 130, 150. And so Prabhupada was way uptown, in the uptown. And it was all wealthy people there. You had people like Krishnamurti living up there and he was living in a nice studio with all French furniture and, you know, very opulent house. And Prabhupada was just bored a guest in somebody's house. So somebody told him that you should go down to the lower side of New York because there's a lot happening there. There's a lot of young people there and I think they will be receptive to you. Uptown, the audience is more sophisticated, high class people and old ladies and things like that, you know. But downtown, it's all the young people and they, I think that they will be more interested in what you're saying. So. Prabhupada transferred himself downtown to the lower, what's called the lower east side. And we have the place even today, the same place which was rented originally by Prabhupada when he came there in New York. It's on 26 Second Avenue. 26 Second Avenue. This a historic address in the minds of followers of Srila Prabhupada because that was the first residence of Prabhupada where he began his mission in New York. 
and we have a tempo there today. They have programs there. There's a regular activities going on. They managed to purchase that property and the devotees maintain it. So if you ever get a chance to visit there, please go and see that place and feel the spiritual energy. Srila Shri Prabhupada was having his programs there at 26 Second Avenue. He had rented this place and it, before he rented it, it had been a shop and the name of the shop was Matchless Gifts. So Prabhupada thought this is appropriate. We will keep that name, Matchless Gifts. It had been a gift shop. You know, gift shops, they sell things for people's birthdays and for presents and so on. So Prabhupada thought, yeah, this is the right name for our center also. So Matchless Gifts was the name of the store. And Prabhupada put a notice in the window saying, Bhagavad Gita lectures, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And every evening, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every in the evening, 7.30 to 9, Prabhupada would give the lectures on Bhagavad Gita. And they, begin, they he would begin with Kirtan and then he would speak on Bhagavad Gita. And uh, what happened one day while he was walking in the street, because he was dressed in his saffron, in his sannyasi robes, one American man saw him and understood that he was a sadhu. And he was surprised to see someone dressed like that in New York, walking in the streets of New York in saffron robes. And so the young American man spoke to him and, and he found out that he said, yes, I have come from India, I have come from Vrindavan and I have my center and I'm having classes, you please come. So Prabhupada gave, gave the address and the details and the young man came and then the young man also brought his friends. And in this way they got a group of people who started to come because they were very interested in Indian culture. This young man actually was a professor in the university in USA. He was an English professor, but he had been to India. He had visited India. And so he was familiar with the culture. And so he was very interested. He went to the Prabhupada Center, he brought his friends, and in this way more, more people started to come. Young people. And of course, Prabhupada, he didn't have really any money somehow. How did he get funds? Well, sometimes he would sell a set of books. He would go himself to the bookstores and show the books. And when he would go to the bookstores before going, he would cook prasadam. He would prepare samosas, nice samosas, and he would take the samosas to the bookstore and meet the people in the bookstore, give them prasadam and then request him to take his books, to put his books inside the bookshop. And sometimes also even some professors from the universities because in New York there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's universities which have Sanskrit departments and there's some people interested in this kind of thing and they would come and they would also purchase the books. They would be very surprised to know that somebody had come from India and was preaching the message of Krishna and Bhagavad Gita and even Srimad Bhagavatam. They could not imagine that the Srimad Bhagavatam was being published the way Prabhupada was publishing it in such detail. So they would purchase Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So they would purchase Prabhupada's books and in this way Prabhupada would somehow maintain. And when he would have his programs every e in the evening, he would maybe ha he began with one apple and he would cut the apple into pieces and he would give 
everyone one piece of apple and then he had a hat and he would pass a hat around and everyone would put something in the hat you know and these young people they were not rich people they were not wealthy people so they would put some change in you know it would be coins you know <laughs> so many coins and so on and Prabhupada would count the count the money and then he'd go oh fifteen dollars twenty seven cents <laughs> you know you know like this Prabhupada uh, was somehow maintaining the Krishna conscious the first Krishna conscious center and then people became more and more friendly with him and they began to come and live there at the center they would come every day and he would cook for them he would cook their lunch they would come every day because they would say we don't know how to be vegetarian we only know salad is vegetarian we don't know any how to cook any so then Prabhupada say you then you come here I will cook for you and they would come and he would cook and then he would also teach them how to cook he would teach them how to roll the chapati how to cook the chapati how to chant the dal, how to make sweets and things like this and sometimes even they would have a feast Prabhupada taught them how to celebrate the different festivals just like when it came time for Janmashtami Prabhupada told them that tomorrow is Krishna's birthday and we are going to fast and the devotees were shocked they said we never had what is this fast so by by 11 o'clock in the morning they thought they were going to die because they had not eaten you know. they were not accustomed to fasting it took a, a long time and the, when they finally broke the fast at midnight he only gave them fruit salad is this all only fruit salad <laughs> been fasting all day you're only giving us some fruit salad but somehow after taking the fruit salad they felt satisfied because it's the nature of prasadam that it's sp spiritually satisfying so Srila Prabhupada was introducing all of these things to them and he asked them to continue to publish his magazine he asked them to take it over from him he said I began it now I want you to do it you also write articles you are educated people and I've been lecturing to you on Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam so you can write articles yourself and publish them and in this way I want you to continue this Back to Godhead magazine and so the devotees they began to write articles and in the beginning the magazine was very simple they had one kind of a Gestetner machine and they would like uh, just duplicate you know the pages and then they would collate it and staple it and then they would also go out and distribute it and Srila Prabhupada also introduced them to Sankirtan that one day Prabhupada had gone to the park that near to the place where he was living there was a park and Prabhupada had sat there and began to chant because he had brought some pair of cartels with him from India so he sat down under a tree and he began to chant the Hare Krishna mantra and he was chanting for some time and when he looked up he saw there were young people there they were also watching and not dancing so in this way Prabhupada attracted more people and he encouraged the devotees also to perform this Sankirtan to go out and chant the holy name in the public and give the holy name to people let them hear the holy name 
And at that time also, they could try to, try to distribute some magazine and even sometimes prasadam and give invitations to come for the program. They would often meet interested people and they could invite them. So Srila Prabhupada began like this in New York and it happened that there was one young couple who had been coming to Prabhupada's programs and they were moving to San Francisco. So Prabhupada requested them that when you go to San Francisco, you make also one center there. Just as we have, just as we have here in New York, I want you to do the same thing in San Francisco. And I will also come there, Prabhupada told them. So in this way, the young couple, they went to San Francisco and they managed to also, they, they actually did it. They did everything Prabhupada told them. They made a center and they had a lot of young friends, people they knew, and they brought them into Krishna consciousness. And they became very interested in Krishna consciousness. And then they invited Prabhupada to come, to leave New York and come there to San Francisco. And when Prabhupada went to San Francisco, then many people all came there to the airport to receive him. And they were very happy to have the Swamiji in their midst. And of course, at that time in the 60s, it was very uh, revolutionary. There was a lot of social unrest. Young people were supposed to go to Vietnam and fight the war. And of course, they didn't want to go. So Prabhupada was there and they were having their programs and people were coming. Many people were coming and eating prasadam because there were many people living around the area and they were all, they all knew Hare Krishna and they were all, they would all know you get good food at the Hare Krishna temple. So they used to come, they would feed everyone, a lot of people. And this way they began the Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada had actually registered the society when he was in New York. One evening he just announced to everyone, he said, so I want to register this society, so we need eight people to be the founding members. So he would say, you Mr. William and you Roger and you Michael and he would, you know, he knew the names of the different people and he would request them, you please come and sign here, I want you to be one of the founding members. And this way they incorporated the society. They registered the society there in New York. And then they went to San Francisco and they had center there. And then some other devotees had gone to different places. Some people had gone to Canada even. Anyway, there was, a, there was one young man who had joined Krishna consciousness and he was eager to go to London because at that time in the West there was a lot of interest in pop music and there was a famous musical group called the Beatles. So this young man, he had the idea, he said, I know many musicians here in San Francisco. I know many of the pop groups here. And I'm sure if I go to London, I can get the Beatles also. I can know them, I can make friends with them. And he said, I know they're interested. Because at that time, uh, one of them was playing sitar. Ravi Shankar, of course, was very famous. His music, very popular then, playing the sitar. And uh, the young man, from San Francisco, he said, I will go to London and we will make the Beatles, we'll get them also interested in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada encouraged them, yeah, why don't you go? So he said, but don't go alone. 
because it was a married man. He said, you take your wife with you. You have a child. Your child can also go. And two other couples, they also went. So there were six people, three couples with one child, and they went to London. And they went to London and they did not know anybody also. And they did not have hardly any money either. Very less money. Somehow they managed to make it to get into London. Uh, they were living in London. How, how did they get funds to maintain their life? One of them knew some, he knew how to do some uh, renovation of houses. And he would do some work for people. Some Indian families were there and they would give him some work to renovate their house, to build their house. Another person was a photographer. He would get work making, taking photographs and earn some money that way. Another man was a musician. He would tune people's pianos. And in this way, in this way somehow they were surviving. And for nearly one year, they were living in London, maintaining themselves. And at the same time, making more and more friends, meeting people. Then finally, they got the opportunity to meet one of the, the, the young man who wanted to come to London. He went to an, the office of the recording company and he met George Harrison. And when he met the George Harrison from the Beatles, he said to him, he said, oh, where have you been? I was wondering where you were. <laughs> you know, they had been there in London for a year trying to meet these people, and when they met them, the people said, where have you been? We were wondering where you were. They said, yeah, we already know about your guru because we got his record. Prabhupada had made a record. When he first went to New York, one man had said to Prabhupada, he said, let's make a record. And they did a recording of Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna. And that recording got distributed, not in a very big way, but somehow these people in England, the Beatles, they had also got this recording of Prabhupada and they had heard Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna and they had liked it. They thought this music is really from another world. It's really very special. And so when they met the devotees, they were very happy and they were very nice to them. And then it wasn't long before they arranged to make a recording in England also. And when they made the recording, just like you hear every day, when we greet the deities in our ISKCON temples, you hear that Govindam, Govindam, Madhipursam, Tamaham Bhajan. So that was the second record they made. The first record was the Hare Krishna mantra, and the second one was this Govinda record. And so it was because they went there to London and they took the risk to go there to try to establish Krishna consciousness, that they met these very important, famous people, and they could make these records. They helped them to produce these wonderful recordings of, of Krishna consciousness music. So they began the Krishna Conscious Center. Not only did they make records, but they also, you know, they, they were able to get a big temple, a big property donated there in London. We have one place, it's called Bhakti Vedanta Manor. And it was purchased by one of those musicians from the Beatles group by George Harrison. So it's a very it's a very big place and it has land, there's a lake there, there's a forest there. We have our Goshala there also, we have cows. And every day is visited by many, many people. And on Janmastami, for example, they get like 60,000 people come. And so in London to celebrate Janmastami in such a way, not a small thing. It's a big thing. So this is all Srila Prabhupada's legacy, that Srila Prabhupada began all of this 
and he pushed he wanted these things done he sent people to different parts of the world to begin the Krishna consciousness movement even though they didn't have money and we didn't have books but still the devotees were there just like I remember I had come to India 1975 and I was staying in Delhi in Delhi at that time we had about six devotees and I think we were all foreigners maybe two were Indian you see and we were beginning the Krishna consciousness movement we had one rented house actually the Delhi temple had begun in a very unusual way Srila Prabhupada had brought devotees from America with him to come to India to begin the Krishna consciousness movement he had brought about 20 of his uh, American disciples with him to India and they were traveling to different programs around India so once they had been up to Amritsa and they were going back to Mumbai and they were in the train in Delhi sitting in the train station when a man came up to them and said to and spoke to Prabhupada and he said oh he said why don't you have a temple in Delhi and so then Prabhupada immediately turned to the devotee who was sitting next to him and said Guru Das get down here get off the train here and he said here's 50 rupees to help you to get. <laughs> so he gave him 50 we, no, we had no books you know and <laughs> and he said now you're in Delhi he said you should meet the Prime Minister <laughs> At that time Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister and so they did it you can see the picture where the devotees in those days they met but Indira Gandhi there's a very nice picture where the devotees the lady who sang the song Yamuna she was the wife of Guru Das and other devotees among them like Banu Swami who's in uh, Chennai he's also there in that picture they met with Indira Gandhi you can see the picture so in this way Prabhupada had always very big goals of what he wanted to do he didn't think in a small way he wanted to do everything very big in fact the one devotee who had gone there to London he's just published a book about his experiences with Prabhupada the book is called hunting rhinos with the Swamiji hunting rhinos right when you go hunting Prabhupada used to say if you go hunting for a rabbit and you miss then people will laugh ha uh ha -huh -huh. you missed but if you go hunting for a rhino then they will say oh very difficult yeah so it, Prabhupada didn't like us to think small he wanted us to do big things wonderful things he wanted for Krishna has to be very nice the best do everything very nicely for the pleasure of Lord Krishna so Prabhupada pushed the devotees to go and risk everything to distribute Krishna consciousness just like the temple which we have in Vrindavan uh, we didn't have really funds to build that temple people were not donating money India at that time was not there was not a lot of money and we were a new society so when you're a new society people don't trust you and even you know they were saying bad things about devotees they had made the film Hare Krishna Hare Ram and they said these two people you know they're not really sadhus and so on so not everybody was willing to help the Krishna consciousness movement and it was difficult to get funds but Prabhupada wanted to build temple in Vrindavan we built one also in Mumbai in Prabhupada's time also and the land in Mayapur was acquired and so to get funds was very difficult how to get funds so devotees would go to Japan and they would go to in, in those days Japan was doing quite well economically in 1970s and devotees would distribute the books on the street 
and whatever collections they were getting, it was all brought to India to help build these temples like Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan and the Juhu temple, Bombay, Radharasa Bihari and the Mayapur project. The funds went there. We also, of course, in Prabhupada's time, we opened the temple in Hyderabad because land had been donated there. Mr. Pularedi had donated land in Abbots, so we had the temple there in Hyderabad. But apart from that, we didn't have really anything. And the, the movement was living, it was very new and it did not have much funds. But still we were going on. We were publishing, trying to get permission. Even printing books was difficult. In 1977, I remember uh, there was a nice young man coming to the temple who was interested to be a devotee and he wanted to read Bhagavad Gita. At that time in our Calcutta temple, we had one Bhagavad Gita and it was brought from the West because we had not printed any Bhagavad Gita here in India, 1977. The printing only began later. There was no paper. You couldn't get paper even to print books. It was so difficult to do things there. So try to imagine how difficult it was. But somehow we began the Krishna consciousness movement and it's still going on. And of course it's much bigger now today. There's so many centers around India. Here in Bangalore also you have so many centers. So Krishna consciousness has really changed a lot. And the books are also being published now. They're all available, nice quality. If you see the original edition which Srila Prabhupada had published in 1960s, then it's very different. So a lot of things have changed, but the principle is the same. We have to chant the Maha Mantra and we have to follow the regulative principles. Srila Prabhupada did not compromise on anything. Sometimes people wanted to get initiation without chanting 16 rounds. Just like one time there were these young men in Hawaii. They were teaching tennis. They were tennis, tennis coaches, lawn tennis. They were coaching people in and they said, we like to chant Hare Krishna. We follow the principles, but we can only chant 10 rounds a day. So Prabhupada said, then you cannot get initiated. First you chant 16 rounds, then you can be initiated. So this is very important. Uh, you have the principles Prabhupada did not want to compromise on. He wanted us to follow strictly, give Krishna consciousness without any adulteration. And so many other people, they may be speaking about Krishna, they may be teaching even Bhagavad Gita, but we have to see how much are they following? How much are they authorized? Is the parampara there? Is it all pure? Is it all done for the glorification of Krishna? This is very important to keep Krishna in the center. So Srila Prabhupada taught all of us how to use our life in the service of Krishna. I was very fortunate that I could join the Krishna Consciousness Movement in 1971 when I was very young. I had just graduated from college and I had studied Bhagavad Gita when I was at college, but I had not understood it. But when I started going to the ISKCON center, then I saw they were having classes every day and I was very interested to hear and to discuss with the devotees. And they convinced me on the importance of this Krishna consciousness movement. So I encourage all of you also take this Krishna consciousness movement very seriously. Try to understand Srila Prabhupada's mission and take part in it. Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions?
Anybody has any question or comment? Yes, Prabhu? How did I meet Prabhupada? I met Prabhupada in his book first. I bought a book. I bought a book. I bought a Krishna book one day and I took it home. I showed it to my friend and he had a book by the same author. Yeah. He had a book called The Topmost Yoga System and we thought this is surprising, that both books by the same man. And then we studied the books more and then we understood, oh, it's Hare Krishna. And then we knew there was a center there in London. I was living in London and I went to the center, we went to the center and we started to go regularly. So I met Prabhupada first through the books. Then later on he came to visit London. At that time also I got initiation from Prabhupada when he came to London. We were not many people, we were about 20 devotees in the temple when I joined London in the center there. There were two ladies and the rest were men, all young men. We were all young teenagers in early 20s and uh, we were all very enthusiastic to spread Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada came there. I was initiated at the same time with uh, Subhak Swami. Subhak had joined there. He was the only Indian devotee. His parents had sent him to London for education. <laughs> they were worried he might become a sadhu in India. <laughs> so he went to London and met the devotees. <laughs> and became a devotee. So that's how he got the name Subhak. Very fortunate. He was, he had joined before me, he joined earlier than about one year before me and he was waiting for Prabhupada to come so he could get his initiation. You know, he would, Prabhupada would sometimes accept disciples by letter, by mail he would accept them. But Subhak said, no, I want to wait till Prabhupada comes, when Prabhupada comes and it will be initiated. So I was initiated with Subhak Swami. Mahavishnu was also initiated at that time. So uh, get, that was when I saw Prabhupada. Yeah. So, I'm very Why is it so important to chant the Hare Krishna mantra? Well, everything comes from the chanting of Hare Krishna mantra. Our Krishna consciousness begins when we start to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Prabhupada explains by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, then you're connecting to Krishna. Krishna is in his name. It's not different. In the material world, you know, we say water, 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 but what the name water is different from the substance, from the liquid water. But Krishna and his name are not different. And when you chant this Maha Mantra, then you are connecting to Krishna. You're directly connecting to Krishna and we're awakening our consciousness of Krishna. The difference? Yes, definitely. By chanting Hare Krishna, you can get immediate appreciation 
how your consciousness is changed, how you feel, you can feel different. You become more aware of your spiritual self. You understand that you're not simply the body, but you're a soul living in the body. This is the beginning of the process of Self-Realization and it comes about by chanting the Holy Name. This is the process for this age. As you chant the Holy Name, then you can awaken that, I am not the body, I am a soul living in the body. And as you go on chanting, then you can understand more that my soul is a part of Krishna, the Supreme Soul. And we have a relationship with Krishna. So within the heart there are actually two souls. There is the, the Jiva Atma and the Super, the Paramatma, like two birds in a tree. So Krishna is in our heart and we are also in the, in the heart as a soul. And Krishna is waiting for us to surrender to Him and to approach Him. And that surrender begins when we start to chant the Maha Mantra, when we chant the name of Krishna. Then Krishna becomes pleased and He reveals Himself to us more and more. And it goes on, Krishna reveals more and more as you go on. But the beginning is with chanting the Holy Name. Yes Prabhu? Well, you have to understand that Srila Prabhupada had many disciples and Srila Prabhupada was in the 70s and, and 80, you know, I was very young and very new and Prabhupada was his whole life a Vaishnava. So I really didn't feel very qualified to approach Prabhupada and to try to be you know, in, because Prabhupada already had his own group of servants and people who were serving him. And generally the mood was, don't disturb Prabhupada, you know, keep away. We would go for walks with Prabhupada, morning walk, sometimes go on a walk with Prabhupada. That was also restricted, who got to go? <laughs> Not everybody's allowed to go on the walk with Prabhupada. <laughs> There's so many things, you know, that they didn't, you know, because if there were too many people walking, then people would walk too close and they may kick Prabhupada's feet or something, you know. So, always, you know, there was always some uh, restrictions, some control there in monitor, monitoring Prabhupada. Generally though in India it was a bit easier that there was, you know, you could be a bit more close, a bit more around Prabhupada. In the West, or at least it was like that, it was very much more controlled. In India also it was controlled but maybe not quite to the same degree as it was in the West. But you know, generally I, I would just try to hear Prabhupada and try to serve. Well, uh, we were inspired particularly by Prabhupada's example that he had, you know, done so much. He had taught everything. The cooking was all taught by Prabhupada. You know, how to wear the sari and the dhoti and everything was all taught by Prabhupada. How to put on tilak was taught by Prabhupada. And so, you know, everything was just coming from Prabhupada, you know. So we we were we were certainly looking you know we were all his followers and uh, I think the inspiration was coming not just from Prabhupada but from the people who were also serving Prabhupada that there were so many wonderful persons who were all dedicated to Prabhupada and that was very inspiring to me to see that so many uh, qualified, educated people were so dedicated to Prabhupada 
that I, and they knew Prabhupada, they were connected closely with Prabhupada, and they were such, such they, had, they were such wonderful personalities that I was convinced through their association to also dedicate myself to Prabhupada. Yes, Mataji? What? The service which pleased Prabhupada? Most? Well, Prabhupada was pleased when he saw us happy in Krishna consciousness. That he wanted to see everybody happy in their, whatever service you're doing, that you do it that you're happy to serve Krishna. Somebody is happy to serve the deities, somebody is happy to cook, somebody is happy to take care of the cows, somebody is happy to distribute books. You know, Prabhupada just wanted to see that we were happy in Krishna consciousness. He didn't care so much about one service more than another, but he wanted to see that we were contented, satisfied, and please, happy in our service to Krishna. That was most important. Prabhupada wanted to see that we had a better life in the service of Krishna. Okay, so nine o'clock, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. We thank um, and extend a very, very uh, heartfelt gratitude to His Holiness Bhakti Vignavinash Maharaj. Uh, we would uh, uh, express our gratitude by chanting loudly the Hare Krishna mantra for the benefit of Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Maharaj, our uh, sincere apologies today being a working day. We were not able to uh, introduce you properly, so I thought we would do it now. I'll just read out a short profile of Maharaj. Maharaj was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in London in 1971. A year later, he received uh, his second initiation. He's been preaching for over the last 25 years in Asian countries such as India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Thailand. Through his years of preaching, he has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration. Taking sannyas in Mayapur in 1994 from uh, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj did not mean much of a change in his lifestyle since Maharaj has always been very strict with his sadhana. Whoever gets to know Maharaj admires and respects his sincere and faithful practice of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. He truly walks his talk. Maharaj has been teaching with uh, the MI, that's Mayapur Institute, since its inception. So that's a short introduction about Maharaj. Maharaj would also be speaking on Sunday uh, for the Bhagavatam class. And uh, we have a, a very nice announcement. It's uh, the ISKCON GBC's effort to make Srila Prabhupada as the preeminent personality, preeminent Shiksha Acharya of every ISKCON devotee in uh, the movement. And uh, towards this, ISKCON Jagannath Mandir is also making a tiny effort. We are declaring the last Thursday of every month as Srila Prabhupada night from today. Maharaj has inaugurated that and every... Uh, Thursday, every last Thursday of every month, we would all gather and uh, hear about Srila Prabhupada's pastimes and discuss a little more about how Prabhupada has been contributing uh, in our lives, even today, uh, uh, in every, every one of our lives. So this is an initiative and we hope that all of you would come in large numbers 
and uh, discuss and uh, hear about Srila Prabhupada more and more. And we also want to inform everyone about our new Bhakti Sadhan inauguration that is going to happen on Sunday. Uh, that is at 5 p.m. Um, Vidurmada Prabhu and Anantavallabha Prabhu and many other devotees are joining hands to open the new preaching initiative there. So kindly do uh, attend that program. Tomorrow morning we'll have uh, uh, His Grace Dinabandhu Prabhu's last session. After that, uh, Prabhu is traveling to Mail Kote and uh, Sri Ranga Patna. So that tomorrow morning would be the last session. So kindly don't miss the session as well. We once again uh, extend a very, very warm and uh, a heartfelt gratitude to Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj. And uh, of course, um, this being the Purushottam month and one of the most important activities being serving uh, Vaishnava and uh, Maharaj is here. So any contributions towards Maharaj's preaching effort, we would request you to... Um, Avdesh Prabhu will be there near Prabhupada's altar. Kindly make your contributions to Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And we'll go for Prasadam. Where did I? 